Hey everybody, Rebels of Cloud9 here. I'm here today with a new build. I did do an inbox review of this one, but I will do it again because I'm super excited about doing this kit. I've been waiting for it all year. It is the Nakajima B5N2 Kate Torpedo and Bomber. Um, this is a new tool from Airfix, and I'm really excited to see this one on the market. Uh, like I said, I did an inbox review, but I'll do another one here. So you don't have to, you know, go and hunt that down. So let's open it up here. I really, really want to dig in and build this kit. It looks like way too much fun. So here we go. Let's start with the first sprue here. Let's go over this really quick. We've got the engine, cowling detail. It's really cool. So you have open and close cowlings, and um, yeah, the engine has some superb. Utterly superb detail in it. We've got our windows. I think I'm going to be using this one here in the back. It's got the um, back door open. I'd like to have the gun pointed out. I think that'd be kind of fun. I would like to buy a second one. I'm strongly considering buying the um, starter kit, which looks like. Hold on. Okay, it looks like this one. Right here, it is a midway set, so it's two different decals, and you get another wildcat, which I would really like. And I love this decaling option for this one here. Looks great. Love the blue band and the uh, yellow tail. So I'm really considering getting that one, even though I don't have um, quite enough to build already. I'm lacking in kits very much. I need more. Um, I really, really don't. Uh, that's a big problem with me. I overspent this year and underbuilt. <laughs> Anyways, um, this is really cool. I never noticed this before, but there's these little uh, bracers up here. These little pegs, not bracers, pegs sitting up there. And what these are are uh, little uh, pins that, or rods that would stick up. And these would be painted typically red, sometimes silver. The Zero has them on there, and what they are is the indicator that the landing gear is down. So, like the Zero has it, um, the Spitfire actually has that. These little flaps that would pop up, they're kind of in the back here of the Spitfire. So, if you're building the wheels up, trim those things off, but if you're having them down, keep them that way. Uh, but, but I'd paint them either red or silver. And here we have the main sprue with the fuselage sections and the lower part of the wing. Got some lowered flaps for those of you who want to have that on there. Looks pretty cool. And here we have the pilots. Now these aren't, they are not Japanese pilots. So that was my only complaint about them. But you do get pilots, which is pretty cool because sometimes you don't anymore. Except part of his face is missing completely. Yeah, it's kind of sad. But what's really cool is you can have the wings folded. So you get these ribs in there. Uh, we've got some wheels. We've got some of the torpedoes and all that jazz. And the seats and the guns there. Closed or exposed. And here we have the torpedo, which is the one I'm going to be building. And some more cockpit detail. There's a lot of cockpit detail in this. So if you wanted to have all the windows open, this is definitely the kit to do something like that with. Because you will see it. It's pretty awesome. And then we have typical Re uh, Rebel Oops. Uh, Airfix instructions here. Very easy to read. Lots and lots of good detail in them. Um, pay attention to these little diagrams on the top. It is for the closed wings, open wings, whatever bombs or torpedoes you are using. Um, yeah, here wheels up, wheels down. Da, 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 da. Just pay attention to that, but they're very, very easy to read, and they'll be very, very good. So, what about color diagrams? So this is the one I'm going to build. This guy right here. I really like this one. Uh, why not the Pearl Harbor version? Uh, because my airbrush will not replicate detail that fine. Um, so, uh, a little reluctant, yes, but 
I, I want it to look good, and I, I won't be able to make it look good if I use that one. Uh, and I can't get this out. Come on, there we go. So here's the decals. They are, are they cartographed? They should be. I know sometimes Airfix hasn't been using cartograph. Yep, cartograph. Sure, bump the camera. Right there. I always love looking for that little symbol because it means the decals are going to be good. Hopefully, sometimes they're hit and miss, but um, let's say 9.5 9 times out of 10. So, what's really cool, I never noticed this before. This is really, really awesome. Usually, you get like eight Hinomarus, that's what these are. Um, you get like two different ones, and then ones for the basic scheme, top and the bottom and the sides. But this one here, look at this, you get all these extra Hinomarus if you're not using them. So I am pretty darn excited about that. So that means I'll have plenty of spares for later. So, I'm going to go get this thing started. What do we start with? We start with drilling out the holes in the bottom. And I will be back with more. Okay, got the uh, wings glued together here. Now there's a little piece of clear plastic here. It goes in the center uh, for these two windows. Big problem. They are very uneven. Horribly, horribly uneven. To sand them down and fix them would be a lot of work. And they're also very scratchy, which is sad. But... Uh, I do have a solution for this. What I'm going to do is just fill in the windows with uh, crystal clear. I'm just going to put a little uh, tissue paper in there when I airbrush and all that. And, um, you know, that'll be okay. A uh, little bit of a fit issue right here uh, for these foot pedal bars there. Uh, you just need to sand them down a little bit smaller. It's a little bit of tight squeeze. Not bad, but a little tight squeeze. Um, and then what I went and did is the chair the pilot seat. I drilled out all the holes. So, looks pretty good, I think. Quite happy with that. And, uh, yeah, let's continue on here with this, with this project. So I need parts. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to build the whole thing. Uh, well, not the whole entire cockpit, I shouldn't say that. I'm going to build most of the cockpit. And then I'm going to, um, is this it? Zero six. Oh, okay. And then what I'm going to do is, um, airbrush it, paint all the little details, give it a wash and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, I'll, it'll just be a little bit easier for me that way, I think. So, as far as it is going, though. You know, as, as well as it's going. Um, not having any troubles with it, to be honest. Except for those nice big fat sink marks there. I don't know what it is lately, but I am getting all sorts of models with these injector pins and sink marks in the most saddening places. I don't want them to be. Okay, and let's sand these down. Oh, that's better. So again, one of the things I'm really impressed with with this kit is the is the detail that they that they've thrown into it because um, it is a lot. They they really crammed into this into this model, so it does fit. But I'm betting because I kind of, you know, <laughs> I kind of erased a lot of it. <laughs> it won't be as precise a fit, you know. When I drilled out all those holes there. We will see. So that'll go there. Oh yeah, that looks like it. That looks like a perfect fit. Grab that. 
So this is one of those kits where I think, you know, if you really wanted to go nuts having all the windows open and stuff. And, and you know what, the only thing I would ever think to add into this canopy, and I'm thinking about doing it myself right now, is um, some seatbelt harnesses. That's about it. I think that's like the only detail really missing, you know. If you went out and bought an Edward kit, um, full of all the, you know, nice detail that they have in there, that'd be great, but it's kind of unnecessary in a way. There's just so much stuff already, already in it, you know. And, uh, the only thing I would ever say is seatbelt. Get yourself some seatbelts, possibly. Okay. I've always seen people having those. They have, like, a fret of, I don't know, it looks like 50 seatbelts. And they're, they're just generic seatbelts. They're not specifically for any aircraft which is really cool but I've never been able to find those I've only seen them I, I think they're like a limited run type thing I don't know if Edward don't think they make them otherwise I probably would have seen them so this is the telescope and there's a bit needs to be sanded off here on the side yeah Bit of a seam line there. Probably on the other side too. Eh, not, no, not really. But I'll clean it up anyways because I can. I'm here, might as well do it, right? So then this fits onto there. Oh, gee. I'm going to use extra thin for that. Okay, that looks great. So this is going to be very long, doing all these tiny pieces. So I'm going to go spend some time. Yeah, I think that's the telescope they look down right there. This would have been a really fun aircraft to take a flight in, you know, because you can look down at it. You know, imagine sitting in the back there and you just look down all day at everything going on. It'd be pretty darn cool. So yeah, I'm going to go and build more of this stuff that's going to take me quite a while to do before I can kind of show anything. But really just wanted to show the seat there. So I'm quite happy about that. So what you do is you build the whole bed in here. You put the two fuselage halves together and you put it on top like that. And I'm really curious to see how that's going to fit. I think it's going to be well, but um, yeah, that's why we're building it. We're going to see how, how well exactly it does work. There's these little slots right there on either side. Yeah, that's for the fuselage, so this isn't how I like to build them. I like to put the bottom wings on and then put each of these sides on because that way you can compensate when it doesn't fit and you don't have to spend all your time sanding down the wing root and stuff, but who knows? Who knows? I, I'm quite optimistic it's going to be a perfect fit, but uh, yeah, let's go get to that point. Got some other stuff to do before we quite get there. Alright, I've glued everything in place. I drilled out the holes in the seat. Check that out. Focus, there we go. Looks pretty good. Two of them I got a little bit too close there, unfortunately. But uh, I think it looks pretty good anyways. Um, as far as the construction goes, uh, really, really well. Straightforward. Pretty simple. Very good fit. Um, the only thing I ran into was a bit of a problem with some... Um, seam line issues. There's quite a few seam lines like on the seats, um, particularly this radio here. Um, that needed to be sanded down. They were, they were bad on that one, but again, it's such a big thick piece, you just keep sanding till it's even. You're good to go. So, that was about it for, for kind of problems. I think the only kind of troubling piece um, on, this, on this little build here is this control stick here. Because um, what you're supposed to do with it, and it would have been easier to do this, it's the last step on here. It would have been easier to do it before the seat and the back. Um, oh shoot, just left my, my 
head, brain, melon thing. Um, <laughs> it just, uh, it would have been easier if this wasn't in there. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to like kind of put the, it's, it's a T-shaped piece here, and you're supposed to put it in underneath and glue it. It's, it's a bit frustrating, so if you don't have a good set of tweezers, um, just do that beforehand. Uh, it'll, it'll make your life a little bit easier. Um, if you have tweezers, it, it is manageable, but it is fussy. That's that's my only that's my only gripe. It is a bit fussy, but again, completely manageable. I didn't have any, I didn't really have any problems with it. But um, really looks good. I'm really loving all the interior here. There's a couple decals that need to go in place, like here, and then the control panel. But you put that into the fuselage. So there's I, I did show this. There is some detail in the fuselage. Looks pretty nice. And uh, so what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to airbrush it all green. I'm going to use, um, I think this is it here. Nope. Where did it go? There it is, I think. Yeah, all the way where it shouldn't be. XF71 cockpit green. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to airbrush the entire thing uh, in the sidewalls, all that and then go to town painting everything up the way it should be and that's kind of about it for right now like I said it's a, it's a lot of little prep work in here now one of the hard things about this aircraft and a lot of Japanese aircraft is a lot of them aren't simply just aren't around anymore um, I believe there it says there is one of these it says that the instructions I'll get to that in just a second um, but finding actual reference material of these aircraft is, is really hard to do. Sometimes the only um, reference material you can find is like uh, PacificRex.com, where they actually have people going through, uh, you know, all sorts of islands in the South Pacific, and they come across these planes, and they're just they're just mangled and and they've been decaying in, in you know for 70 plus years, and. Uh, you know, there's really not much left on them, and when you look at, you know, you try and compare a cockpit color, it's, well, at, at this point, it's silver. <laughs> and, and so, um, so for that, there's a really awesome website, and usually whenever I build a Japanese kit, I get sent a link to this page, and uh, believe me, I am very well informed about it. Uh, I love this website. At the bottom of the instructions here on, on the front page, you can go read this. Airfix would like to thank the just hold that there, the Wings Museum, www.wingsmuseum.co.uk. I've got to go check that one out. And Giuseppe Joe Piccarella and Nick Millman of aviationofjapan.com blog for their excellent assistance with this project. Now, I've actually spoken with Nick Millman in email before. Uh, he's helped me out in a, in a couple projects. Uh, sorry, projects, and um, really, really terrific guy. Uh, I wish I had his brains for Japanese aviation. Um, he's been involved in a lot of projects, so to see his name on here is pretty awesome. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I would highly recommend that you check out aviationofjapan.com. It's it's a, like it says there. It's an excellent blog, um, full of so much stuff and. You can you can ask him questions. He's got a whole bunch of like PDF files that you can buy for colors and stuff like that. I downloaded one. You have to ask it, ask for it. But it was all about the trainer color. Uh, what color are the trainer aircraft? Really, really excellent read. Oh, loved it. And so yeah, that's what I'm gonna go do right now. Uh, I'm gonna check out his website for just some little things. But it's nice to know that they actually really went there. To, to do this type of thing. Some of these companies they'll just, you know, whatever. No, nope, they actually went and did their research on it, which is pretty awesome. So, I'm going to go airbrush. I'm not going to show the airbrushing. And then we're going to be back painting up some details. Why am I not going to show the airbrushing? Well, because there's going to be a lot more airbrushing to show in, in just a little while. Okay, uh, I really don't know where I left off. I hate it when I do that, but I have no idea where I left off. Um, so, in case I'm repeating myself, I did airbrush the entire thing green. I did a black and brown wash. Um, and I wanted to add, lastly, some paper 
decals onto the seats. And all these are, oh, I don't actually have them here anymore. Um, they're just the decals out of the Tamiya kits. Um, they give you decals in there. And I don't like using decals for the seat belts because they're a bit too flat. But I don't mind it when you print them out and glue them on there because they have a bit of a three-dimensional feel to them. So I'm actually very happy with these. They look quite nice. But I had a problem as my printer died, essentially. And... Ginger, come here. Come here. Come. And I was able to fix it, thankfully. It was really cool. Um, come here. Yes, come here. Come here. These guys just need attention right now. Start tearing up everything. So... I've got the fuselage glued together, and the fit is actually pretty good. I'm, I'm actually very happy with it, and I think I'm about done. Whoop! Oh no! I could have broken something there. Gee whiz! Quit being such a, you know, quit freaking out, man. I know I should. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like anything's broken. Thankfully, Whew, that scared me. Anyways, so the control panel is in there. Let me show you. Right there. So I'm quite happy with how that... It's actually a very good fit. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised how just, in a sense, nice everything fits. When, you know, I'm, I'm so used to stuff like this not fitting properly. So I am going to have to do a bit of putty work. Um, the one thing I can say was a problem was gluing the, the these this, uh, this fuselage here together. Hey, stop it. Yeah, you, stop it. Uh, gluing this together because you have this gap here, and that was just, that was a bit difficult. So what I actually did is I actually put it on top of here when I, when I glued it. And it worked. I was quite happy about that. So let's try this. So it does, it's weird. Because it, it, like, it just snaps into place, but my my brain keeps telling me it shouldn't, it shouldn't do that. You know, <clears throat> so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this apart for just. Oh, isn't that lovely? Oh, great! She's gonna throw up. Hold. Okie dokie. So that was a that was a mess. Here, look, Ginger. Ginger, are you sick? Are you sick? <laughs> Actually, she's bounced back like nothing happened. Poor girl. Yeah, I'm Pella. <laughs> I'm gonna go lay down. I didn't do anything wrong. You poor girl. All over my look. Ugh, that was so much barf. Oh, I didn't know you could keep that much in you. Like, look at that. It was like half of her her, her whole body here it was just on the floor. This mesh of Chinese food and dog food mixed together and. Anyways, I'm glad she's okay. She does that from time to time anyway, so not a big deal. <clears throat> so, where was I before I was interrupted here? Um, I'm going to, I think I was about here, ready to put these together. Now, one thing that is really frustrating is there's a pole right here. This thing needs to be forward a lot, a lot more than I had anticipated. Um, so I've actually bent it and broken it. But I have managed to glue it back in place. But I'm going to have to do it again. There we go. Okay. Cool. It's not quite snapping like it did before. I guess it kind of is. Okay. So now this is where the... Um, Tamiya Extra Thin comes in handy. So let's see if I can grab this. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Just fits on there perfectly. And uh, it doesn't look like the stress is that bad. So yeah, let's add some glue on there first. Cool. Alright, I'm going to add a lot of glue in here because I'm quite, I'm quite concerned about it keeping its, um, 
its its overall shape the entire time while it uh, while it dries. And let's go here. Maybe nope. Doesn't want to stick. Come on, yes you do. Oh, there we go. Barely, barely sticking on there. It's it's like you can see it's just right underneath the, the tab. Okay. This would be a very unfortunate incident if the dogs decided, to, if the girls here decided to go round two on their supper while I'm doing this. At least the smell cleared. Oh, man. <clears throat> I'm in the wing root here, and I am going to have to add some putty. Oops! Ooh, don't do that! Don't do that! You'll be sorry. I am going to have to add some putty in this wing root here, but I have to do that on the zero too. So this is kind of a complicated little step. Hey, knock it off! I don't know why. It's kind. Of, I think it's kind of funny that both the Japanese kids you have to do this. What did I just say? Hey, hey, stop that! They're trying to test my patience and questioning my authority. Okay. Now oh, what the heck? Just go do what you want. They're not going to listen to me at this point. <laughs> cool. So, it's a bit of a tight fit, but it actually does fit. It's quite nice, actually. And I think I am going to have to putty this line here in the back uh, later on. Once all this glue settles, I'll add more in there. Or I will actually add glue in there. Uh, and then I'll be able to add all the rest of the uh, pieces on there. But uh, so far, it's actually going pretty well. I'm, I'm really pleased with everything fitting. Like, it, it's really, really a good fit. So that was my, again, my big concern, and I didn't have any problems with it, but I can see a little bit of puttying needs to be done in the fuselage. Uh, oh, and I broke this. Ah, look at that. I busted this open right there, that line. Darn it. I can probably fix that later. Mm, it's a bit tight. I might, I might just end up puttying it. I'll see you when I get there. Anyways. <clears throat> In theory, I think I think you have to kind of build it tighter. It does fit, and it does fit quite nicely to my to my surprise. Um, not that I'm lacking any confidence in Airfix, I'm just lacking confidence in the system in general. But it does work, so looks pretty good. And uh, now I got to play the waiting game, and then I can start adding more pieces. <laughs>